climate is changing. The biodiversity is decreasing and our earth is spreading. Greta Thunberg is followed by millions of people and demands change. But how do we actually achieve that change? How do we make the change so our production, our consumption, and our world becomes more sustainable? I suggest that you make that change by starting to talk with the farmers and food producers. And that the food producers and farmers begin to talk with you. I actually quite often talk with the farmer. But I guess that's cheating because that farmer is my dad. <laughs> I grew up at a farm. And here we are not talking about these romanticized organic farms which you read about in children's books or see in commercials. I grew up at a large scale industrial conventional farm. My dad owns 220 hectares of land and he produces 15,000 pigs per year. I was very proud to grow up at a farm. During my entire childhood, I worked for my dad. I have been castrating piglets, chopping sugar beets, and I even gave the pigs antibiotics when they needed it. I never questioned the way we produce pigs. I guess you don't often question the things you're born into because how would you know any better? With such a privileged family childhood, I felt that I was obliged to go and make the world better. So I decided to move to the capital of Denmark to study political science. But moving to the city became a true, true eye-opener for me because in the city, Farmers were suddenly not seen as the ones who held the country's economy and society together. Farming was not seen as something to be proud of. Farmers were instead seen as the ones who destroyed nature, polluted the environment, and accelerated climate change. My new friends in the city asked me questions such as Why doesn't your dad produce organic food? Why are the pigs in the stable and not of the field? And why do we have to produce pigs at all? And I must admit that the worst thing was actually that suddenly having been castrated piglets didn't attract as many guys in the city as it used to do in the countryside club. <laughs> in the political area, I also experienced a disunity. A disunity between, on one side, the green organizations, and on the other side, the farmers' organizations. In our small country, our debate on food was totally black and white. Either you were pro-farming or against it. Either you thought of Danish farmers as animal abusers or someone who produced meat for the growing population. In the beginning, I was totally caught in my own bias from growing up at a farm. I thought that the people in the city just needed some facts about Danish agriculture. They just needed to be enlightened. They just needed to visit the real world at a farm. Then they would understand. But as, as it turned out, I was the one who should understand. Because where is the real world? And is the world more real 
If it's happening on the countryside, then in the city? And I also had to admit that the green organizations truly have a point. We need a sustainable transition. And it is possible for us to consume and produce our food in an even more sustainable way. But in order to do that, I believe that we need to see the bigger picture and not just the half truth. Because it is true that food production counts for more than one fourth of the global greenhouse gases. However, it is also true that we need food for the growing population. And it is true that you can measure pesticides in the groundwater due to conventional farming. But it is also true that chemistry has helped and keep helping farmers to produce food even more efficiently, leaving more space to nature. I guess sometimes life just solves things for you because along the way I met Mother Louise who also insisted in seeing the world in grey instead of in black and white. And together, with two other young women, we founded a think tank three years ago. It is Denmark's first think tank on food, and we call it FRI. In FRI, we bring people together. We bring people together not on Facebook or on Twitter, but we bring people together in real life. We bring young people from the city together with farmers. We bring farmers' organizations together with the green organizations in order to inspire each other to become even more sustainable. Okay, so talking about sustainability, what is it really? In fact, we know that there's no simple answer to that question. For us, sustainability is about always striving to do better. We know that there's no nirvana on earth. There's no finish line. You can always do better. Being an organic farmer, a conventional food producer, a vegan, or a meat lover. You can always do better, and that's a gift. It's a gift for you as a human being that you can keep developing, and it's a gift for our planet. Today, three years later, Fry counts more than 60 volunteers in the age of 20 to 30 years old. As you know, I'm from the countryside, but my colleague is from the city. And I studied musical science, but the volunteers in Fry, they have studied everything from biology to literature. The volunteers in Fry organize knowledge-based events about complex subjects such as the use of pesticides, GMO food, or consumer behavior. Common for the events is that we always invite a professor who is, for example, pro the use of pesticides and a professor who is against the use of pesticides in order to see that bigger picture. We have held more than 60 talks for farmers about how to see themselves as a key for sustainable change. As a, and as a new thing, we have begun to invite farmers into the city to eat the food they produce with the people who actually consume it. Last year, we also invited the food industry, farmers, and last but not least, green organizations to become partners for sustainable development with fire. Here we have partners such as the biggest dairy company in Denmark, Arla, and the biggest meat producing company, Danish Crown. But we are also partners with the green organizations. 
Yes, even the organic bakeries. We invite our partners to meet each other and to talk with each other. And for us, that is smart thinking. Because we know that the farmers and the food producers are the key for more sustainable food production. Therefore, it is smart thinking of the green organizations and the green city hippies to talk with the farmers and to empower the farmers to see themselves as a part of the solution and because the sustainability is about always striving to do better therefore it is also smart thinking of the farmers and the food industry to actually meet with their critics because we all need our critics in order to develop in order to become better versions of ourselves, we need someone who can tell us where and how to do better. Both if we are the food industry or if we are just a human being. We should all see our critics as the greatest gift. I would believe that the world can wait for new seeds to be invented, for titans to fall. I believe that we need to convince existing businesses to change, now and fast. And in order to do that, we have to see the world in grey, instead of just in black and white. When I grew up, I thought my dad and Danish agriculture had the answer for everything. Thanks to our journey with Fry, I now know that nobody has the answer for everything and that we all need our critics in order to develop. So what I'm asking for you is therefore, next time you get the chance, Talk with the farmer instead of talking about him. Talk with the man working in the big meat company. Because he needs you to keep raising his ambitions. And you need him as the key for a more sustainable food production. Let us stare to see the world in grey. Let us stare to see the world in colours. Let us start to make a sustainable transition together. Thank you.